Hey everybody, welcome to Highly Unlikely. We're so glad you're joining us today for the podcast. We have a great guest today. We're gonna have a great time together. Janae's here. Josh is here. Hello. And we, we this guest, very special. Mm-hmm. To our hearts, we have Naomi Damshin with us and- It is Naomi, not Naomi, everybody, just to make sure that we're That is clear. correct, although I have been called Naomi pretty much my whole life yeah. by people here and there. But mistake. Naomi is correct. Naomi. Oh my gosh. <laughs> well, Naomi, we've known for since before we started leading at the church, and she's a dear friend, but also serves as Josh's executive assistant. So we've gotten really close over the years, mm-hmm. and her and I shared a cubicle, you know, yeah. up in the nice brown office upstairs mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. lots of great memories. So mm-hmm. it's going to be a really good conversation today. So just get ready. Naomi is my executive assistant, and all that means is all the good things that come from me and Janae. Naomi has her hand on them. Mm, She makes them sound good, look good, (laughs) feel good. So she's the secret sauce to the recipe. Secret sauce. And you probably didn't know, but sits in on all the podcasts and takes the notes for the description and helps write the titles. And I always say, Naomi's the glue. (laughs) It's true. You guys are kind. Yes. So- Really excited, but we can't forsake tradition. Okay. You know, pull Are the question at the front. From, okay, oh, I pull from the middle. I pull okay. from wherever. Mm. Anybody who's not watching uh, the video, we're pulling from the bowl. Also, just a disclaimer, I'm not good at fast answers. I have to like process. Oh, so I calling. hope it's an easy okay. one. Okay. What is your secret talent? Uh, that's, you know, real easy. Is it? No. Oh. Certainly. What Sorry. Is... Okay. Sarcastic. Okay. I'll start and oh, give you time to think, but I'm like, Pretty good at remembering not many things, but I have this weird knack for remembering numbers. Mm. Like our routing number on our bank that account, is so our true. checking number. He mm. knows the entire routing number of any account that we've had. Yeah, we had lots of cows growing up, and I could, if they mm-hmm. lost their ear tag, I would know what their number oh, was. Wow. So it's like a weird yes. thing with like even his sister said like after that. seeing it one time. Like uh, no, like it. if I just kind of commit to like knowing it, oh, it's pretty easy for me to remember. That is true. That's very true. Okay. Oh, secret. I don't know if I I, one. I thought of one if you need to think Do for it. a minute. Yeah. I might not answer this one. Well, and I think you guys know this one and I can tell the whole story. But when I was like in my probably late 20s, early 30s, I shot a gun for the very first time in my life oh, yeah. at an indoor shooting range. And they had like <laughs> taught us how they were like giving me all the gun safety and like yeah. teaching me how to shoot. And it turns out I'm like really good. <laughs> <laughs> or at least you were back then, right? <laughs> at least I was back then. I've shot like twice since then. <laughs> um, but no, they like had me take this. I think it was called the officer combat training test because they were getting really excited about how good I was at shooting apparently. <laughs> And they Which is the, also why she's my executive assistant. <laughs> <laughs> secret service talent. Yeah. <laughs> Naomi is oh secretively on the safety team. <laughs> no. Sorry, just kidding. No, uh, but they had me do this, this officer combat training test, and then they're, they go and score it, and they come out, and they're like, um, a 160 qualifies you as an expert shot, and you score like a 172. <laughs> and I was like, What? I have a secret talent I never knew people about. Wanting to take you to the shooting range. <laughs> yeah. This is done. Be like, just show me your talent. Uh, yeah, man, like, you guys. That was years ago. So I don't know. I don't know if I still have it. But I was like, what do I do with this talent that I have? <laughs> that I just found out about. <laughs> oh, be a, I don't know sniper uh, in the army. Okay, sorry. I honestly don't know. I. I would say Janae. Janae is like a good athlete, which. Maybe mm, wasn't let's a secret not back talk then. about the glory days. Uh, well, we're I just did. Janae's <laughs> okay. very good at doing Lily's hair. Uh huh. Like Lily That's, will pop a, a, yeah. a princess picture, and mm-hmm. Janae can just like do it. Yeah, I don't mm-hmm. know if that's a secret talent. Okay, it's fine. Let's move on. It's kind of a secret. I, if I think of one, I'll say it, but I really don't know. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. Mm. Oh. I'm like actually thinking. Oh. I don't know. Well, you think about it. We can come I back will. to it at the end. I'm glad that my uh, security is not on my secret talent. <laughs> well, we'll just say we're aware of all your talents because you get to use them. All my them. talents are just out in the open. We That's know what just they are. What it is, right. <laughs> mm-hmm. Okay. So I'm excited to have Naomi on the podcast. A, because I know who she is 
And I feel like a lot of what we're going to talk about has been talked about Mm -hmm. just individually. And I've just learned a lot from you or we have. Um, But I think just as like, even just as girls in friendship too. Mm -hmm. Um, But the season we're really focusing on full send people living a life just full send for Jesus in different areas. Mm -hmm. And so when I talked about you about coming on the podcast, it was really just around your 44, almost mm-hmm. 45. 45 in April. That's right. Hey. 45 in thriving. Fit 16 years till senior discounts. <laughs> <laughs> Which, if, you look, if you're watching YouTube or if you know Naomi, I actually didn't believe Naomi for how old she was when oh, I met gosh. her. She is one that looks younger than she is for sure, but does not act it. But um, so 44 and single and mm-hmm. no kids. Mm-hmm. And I look at your life and knowing even the intricate details of your life where you are living full send for Jesus. Trying. You are. <laughs> yeah. And and I would say you are. Yeah. Uh, and so we just wanted to really talk around that and specifically around singleness and singleness and being a believer. Mm-hmm. And yeah, we're going to get into some other things too. Mm-hmm. But um, so... Sorry, I'm trying to think of how we want to start, but maybe maybe I'll just let you start with like even your heart for this or yeah. just kind of kicking off the conversation of living full send for Jesus yeah. as a single woman. Sure. Um, well, I remember, I don't know how old I was, but I, it was probably like, you know, early, early mid elementary and like me and my cousin would always play house and we'd I had this pretend husband named Rod and I had <laughs> Rod. I thought it was a cool name. I don't know. And Hot Rod. <laughs> could be. <laughs> um, but and I also remember I have this like distinct memory of being like probably I don't know, eight 10 something, an age where you thought 22 was like really old Mm. Mm -hmm. because I remember being like, if I'm not married by the time I'm 22, I'm going to go on a dating show. (laughs) And obviously I was not married by the time I was 22. Mm -hmm. Um, And thankfully something changed in there as well. You didn't go Um, on a dating show. I never did. No. No. In fact, I was telling Janae earlier, like, I had friends in high school, like Christian friends in high school, who were super into like, you know, going on dates all the time. And one of them was like holding hands with t- with two different boys at the same time at like a youth <laughs> event one night. And I was Sorry. just always like, what are you, like, this is crazy. This whole like <laughs> dating world is insane. Right. Um, and so that, like, that was never something that was interesting mm-hmm. to me. Not that I didn't want to be in a relationship, but I just didn't want to go about it like in a mm-hmm. frivolous and I do remember praying to probably later in my teenage years, like if like Lord, if you like if if marriage is something that you have for me, then just like I don't want to go through all these mm-hmm. broken relationships and dating and just like if it really is something that you have for me, then I like I just want that's what I want. I don't right. want to like go through all this striving and finagling to try and find it or get it, um, which was maybe kind of the start of just trying to learn how to be content Mm -hmm. with like what God gives you, but also with what God doesn't give you, Mm. which has been a big um, lesson in my journey is just like really Mm -hmm. trusting um, that what God, that God knows better than I do what's best for me. Right. And like I think about the verses that talk about his ways are higher than mm-hmm. our ways and his thoughts are higher. So he, like, he knows better right. than I do, which I'm thankful for. Like, he knows me better than I know myself. Mm-hmm. Sometimes like, you, I think I want something and then find out later, oh, I'm kind of glad actually I didn't get that. So right. it's like having to trust that God knows that in this um, in this scenario too. Right. Um, but just like learning to be content and then trusting that that whatever God gives me or does not give me right. is because it's for my best. And like mm. really, like you could say that, right. but then like the process of learning to actually like live that out has obviously been, is still, right. <laughs> you know, like hard. Mm-hmm. Mm. And not just for people who are single, I think for anybody. Right. You know. Right. Um, the one question that we had kind of talked about, but that I am wondering just even as believers, like we all love Jesus here Mm -hmm. and serve Jesus. We're in church culture. We are in Christian community. What have you discovered maybe is like wrong thinking that we've developed Mm. around 
singleness as believers mm-hmm. or constructs that we've created or yeah. stigmas or anything? Yeah. Uh, well, I think the like the first thing I think of that just kind of like gets under my skin sometimes is when people say, oh, God's going to bring you the right guy. You know, mm-hmm. God's going to God's gonna bring that for you. Because I'm always just like, but how do you, like, why, how do you know that? Like, how mm-hmm. how do you know that that's what's God's best for me? And don't, like, give me this false hope or this false promise that you don't mm-hmm. know if that's going to happen or not, mm-hmm. you know? Um, so, so that is something I can easily get on a soapbox about because mm-hmm. I'm like, I don't necessarily think that's true. Mm. Right. You and, know? And, and more than likely the motive of someone saying that would be to encourage you or to for believe. sure yeah and and is if god did bring a man it would yeah. be like the right one or like you yeah. know like if he it would be yeah he totally can i'm not you. saying he can't right or won't i'm right. just saying you don't know that for sure right when when you're single mm-hmm. like you don't know if that's going to happen or not happen mm-hmm. and i think for me sometimes if people say that then it's almost like perpetuating this, like, oh, keep putting your hope in that. Right, right. And I'm like, no, I don't want my hope to be in a person, right. mm-hmm. you know, or in a in a relationship. Like, I don't want, I, I want to, like, lift my gaze and my hope, like, beyond mm-hmm. that. So maybe that's kind of why, like, right. it can be frustrating to me when people say that because I almost feel like it's perpetuating. Mm-hmm. No, keep putting your hope in, like, a relationship status. Right. yeah. I'm like, eh, no, mm-hmm. that's not going to fulfill. I think sometimes it bypasses too, like even the desire of somebody's heart. Because <laughs> it's like, oh, in this culture, you grow up, you get married, mm-hmm. you get a house, you mm-hmm. have kids, you do this, then you retire. And sometimes that's not even in somebody's heart. Like we have friends who don't want to have yeah. kids. And people right. will probably say like, hey, when are you guys going to have a family? Mm-hmm. You know, And that's not even a desire. And there's some people who... Yeah. In being single, they want to be single or they believe they're called to be single. Mm-hmm. And sometimes we discount. Mm-hmm. We just kind of take that label of like what we think should be right. and put it on yeah. people and expect them to mm-hmm. just align themselves to what's culturally mm-hmm. acceptable. Well, and even just that question reminds me of a moment we had when we were preparing for, I think it was then, GNO conference for like a panel. Mm-hmm. And <coughs> I had framed a question about like a season of singleness or someone, you know, in a season of singleness. And I love that you very gently, I would say gently informed and help correct Mm -hmm. some thinking. And I just remember you saying, well, Janae, when you say season of singleness, you're implying that it will end. And so I have not said season of singleness Mm -hmm. since then. I Mm -hmm. I think I'll say like experiencing, you know, or like that that's what they're Mm -hmm. in right now. Mm -hmm. Um, And I just think it's those little things like I never intended to, you know, falsely like make anyone feel bad. Of Like if the season never ends, it's wrong. Mm -hmm. So I think too, that's what having you on the podcast, I just really Mm -hmm. was like, I've learned so much in how I frame this as a believer and how Mm I talk about it and to others. And I'm still learning. So I think that was really helpful. Um, And even maybe talking about wrong thinking or Mm -hmm. how we phrase it as believers. Mm -hmm. And and I think we've talked about maybe what has been the most hurtful thing that's either Mm -hmm. been said to you around being single Mm -hmm. by people who love Jesus. Yeah. Or are (laughs) well-intending. They are. They are well-intending. And I'm like, I don't I don't ever want to come off as like um like that I'm not supportive of like marriage and that kind of stuff. Right. Too, because that's valuable. I think mm-hmm. I'm just like, but if, for the people who are single and trying to like live full sun for Jesus, that can be valuable too. And sometimes mm-hmm. as a single person, you feel like you're not as valuable because you're single and because you're because you don't have like a husband to display the relationship of Jesus and the church, and mm-hmm. you don't have children that you're raising, and so you can sometimes start to feel like you are less valuable, mm-hmm. which you know in your head isn't true, mm-hmm. but sometimes, you know, sometimes you just can feel that way. And, and like, I get it. Marriage mm-hmm. is valuable. Parenting is valuable. I don't ever want to, like, um, take away from that in any sense because that right. is so important and so valuable, and we should, the church should do things for families and parents and mm-hmm. and marriages. Um, but sometimes it's a little hurtful to feel like, but where's the stuff to like help me mm-hmm. like 
like champion the single people who, whether they're wanting to be single or feel called to it, or whether they're just like, they just are single, Mm -hmm. you know, like, is there a way we can like encourage those people? Mm -hmm. But yeah, I think a lot of the people who, the the well-intending church people, it's Mm -hmm. probably, you know, like maybe they've just, they're married and they're probably like loving it. And they're just like, you just want you to experience it too. So Mm -hmm. here, take this money and you can only take Naomi out. (laughs) To lunch with this money, which has actually happened to no. me. No. I'm like, essentially, you tried to bribe someone to take me on a date. Okay, that's not cool. Eh, my self-esteem. <laughs> I'm just kidding. But I, I was talking to a friend, too, who was like, you know, I've just started taking stuff like that as a compliment. Because they're basically like, they think I'm valuable and they just, right. you know. And I, yeah, so it's like, you have to keep in mind. Like, I don't think people are like meaning to make you feel really dumb. Right. <laughs> but. Um, yeah. Yeah, so I, I don't know, maybe just like being mm-hmm. more aware mm-hmm. of of some of that. Right. Some of those things. Which and I think it's challenged us and even <laughs> me. Like, you know, where is the where is the Sunday sermon on mm. how to use your singleness in a unique way to serve Jesus? Yeah. And yeah. You know. Or like even maybe not even like a, a sermon, but even like I just I just feel like Christian culture in general, yeah. it's just an area that's that's missing. Yeah, um, which I uh, love when we were prepping for the podcast. Naomi said, "I'm not saying I want a singles night." Like, oh gosh, no! I- in fact, I'm like, <laughs> no. So what we need is speed dating in the church. Uh, yeah, no, that's not what I'm saying. But also, that's like some people would probably be like, "Yes, please," but I'm like, right. that is so not my style. So I'm right. like, eh, no, I, not not. I for think me, there's but. like a broader application because we all have. I was I was talking to somebody yesterday who has. Um, like a challenging situation medically with one of their children. And I was like, man, I just need you to help me because there's going to be things that you see and understand about your situation that yeah. I'm going to say stuff that is so tone mm. deaf or not thought through. And just please forgive me in advance for being tone deaf and help me yes. like speak yeah. into it. I speak think we experience it with like adoption. Right. I'm like, oh, please don't mm-hmm. say it that way, you know, mm-hmm. or please... Don't look at it that way. And I think we all mm-hmm. just, and I know people that just don't care. They're like, well, if you get offended by what I say, that's your problem, right. you know, yeah. but it's trying to love your neighbor as yourself, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. you know, and trying to like care for people for where they're at. Mm-hmm. And yeah. there's a lot of different ways that this applies. Like I for know sure. today is about singleness, but mm-hmm. just yeah. in loving people well and mm-hmm. putting yourself in their shoes mm-hmm. rather than just expecting them to get on mm-hmm. your page. Totally. I think that's such a huge part of it. Right. Mm-hmm. And I think whatever you're experiencing, we've talked about this, like whatever you've experienced, you then kind of become an advocate for it. Like we will always be advocates Mm -hmm. for adoption in the way of like helping educate other people, even to their own ignorance, Mm -hmm. whether, you know, things said in in love. And I think you're an advocate for singleness Mm -hmm. of helping educate people appropriate ways to approach it and view it and the biblical way to view it too. Which or is, being gracious with people right. when they don't handle it. Right. Yeah. You know? and, and I think, yeah, that's another thing that just applies to any area of life is just like mm-hmm. trying to believe the best about people and see it from their perspective. Like they didn't mean to right. probably had good intentions and totally. didn't mean to make me feel bad by it. But mm-hmm. yeah. Mm-hmm. Totally. Yeah. Sorry, I'm just driving that's good. this. That's good. It probably helps that Naomi and I talked before this podcast. Yeah. We were talking and I said, we're essentially having the podcast right now. Um, I mean, this might apply to singleness, but since it's what we're talking about this episode or this season, what has been like the most like full send moment in your life or maybe experience Mm. that you've had in serving Jesus? Yes. Okay. I think this does kind of tie into being single because I think it's an example of something that I never would have been able to do mm. if I had been married or like raising kids. Right. But I was living in Minneapolis, it was after college and had been working for a few years and had an opportunity um, to lead a mission trip and spend a, a whole summer in Peru. Wow. And I, so I like quit my job, I moved out of my apartment. I like spent the summer in Peru leading a mission wow. trip with college age <laughs> students from like across the country. And that 
yeah, and especially for me, like as the as the the fellow six on the Enneagram. Oh, yeah, that's the thing I forgot to say. Why uh, I love Naomi yeah. is we're both sixes on the Enneagram, <laughs> so I'm in good company. Yes, our <laughs> our thought processes are very similar. Um, Nothing bad will ever happen to me. My wife and my assistant <laughs> are both sixes. We, we are looking out for well, you. And if it does, we probably had thought about it. And one yeah, of them's a we'll sharpshooter. <laughs> I've clapped too many times oh, on this podcast. Hilarious. I'm that's sorry. Perfect. Oh my gosh. Oh. Naomi, I love that you went to Peru, but I totally thought you were going to say your full sin experience was going to a DC talk concert in high school. <laughs> oh no, no. That's, that's, that's not full sin. They that's, rapped, you know, it was. It was probably full sin for my mom <laughs> <laughs> who allowed me to go. <laughs> but that was like, that was nothing. No, not the same as Peru. <laughs> not the same. No. Um, yeah, but I mean, that's something I wouldn't have been able to do, mm-hmm. you know, and I think that's a, such an important thing to try and keep in mind, regardless of what, you know, what what's happening in your life. But like in my case, like being single is knowing that there are there's still hard things and there are still really sweet things. Right. And those things look different when you're mm-hmm. married versus when you're single. Right. But everybody still has really sweet things in life and really hard things in life. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, so yeah, that was probably like the most full send. And that whole summer in Peru is what ended up getting me back to North Dakota, which is what ended up getting me, I did like youth work on the reservation for a while, which was another full send kind of a deal for a few years, which then eventually got me to Bismarck, which got me here. Right. Praise God. (laughs) We're (laughs) grateful. I'm grateful too. I'm so grateful. And I think you framed it that way. I mean, you... I mean, are like family to us, like mm. to our kids. You're like auntie, know me, you know. And I just yeah. think that that has been your heart and why you came to mind of being full mm. send for Jesus and singleness is because in common conversation you frame it that way. Like, yeah. if I need help with the kids or you know different things, where I know you've said yeah. this is like my season I'm in. Like I get to help yeah. and be available, or I have the flexibility. Yeah. Yeah. And I think just your pers- perspective on it is really beautiful, mm-hmm. how you've Thanks. taken it and just said, yeah. this is what I'm able to do and help him be yeah. because of the season, not season, but like yeah. where God has me. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I think this ties into a question <laughs> that Janae had written down, but was there a moment in your life when you like had to come to grips with it? Either like, or did it just kind of come to pass that the years kind of went by and you found yourself in a space or... Was it like, no, you hit 22. Yeah. <laughs> you know? And you're like, oh. 22. You know? I even went. And, <laughs> For and, real. And what, and what was that? Was it like, oh, I think this is yeah. where I'm going? Or was it like, oh, I have to accept something? Or like, mm-hmm. what was that like? I, I think it was very much a process. Like, for me, it wasn't like a one moment that I realized it or that I came, I don't know, came to grips with it. And even as I'm saying this now, I'm not saying like, I'm going to stay single forever. Mm-hmm. Like, I don't mm-hmm. know. But so I'm like, also, I'm not. That was a question. If the right man came along, <laughs> are you opposed to it? Are you like, no? Yeah, no, I don't think, like, in singleness or in anything, I don't think we should be like, absolutely not. Mm-hmm. You know, because I'm like, outside no. Outside of I, sin. Well, yes. Right. Outside of, yes, outside of like straight up stuff that's sin. But I think, you know, like, even when people say, are you going to like live in Bismarck forever? Like, I, I don't know. What? Right. <laughs> Just How kidding. dare you? <laughs> yeah. I mean, you just don't know. Right. And that's like partly, I know it's like partly a personality thing too. Mm-hmm. But um, so no, I would never be like, I'm going to be single forever. But I also would never say, I'm for sure going to be married. Right. Like, I, I don't know what, I don't know what the future is. So I mm-hmm. think for me, instead of focusing on either of those things, it's just trying to like stay in today and where God has me today. And like being faithful and surrendering to what he has in front of me Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right now, Mm -hmm. like today, because I don't know. And then being open to what he might want to do in the future. Right. Either way, being single for the rest of my life or not being single, like just being open to either one of those possibilities. And it's like a weird Mm -hmm. fine line that you feel like you're like always trying to balance on. Mm -hmm. Um. But like I don't I also don't want to like live in this in this constant state of like waiting for something to come. So you said it was a process. Would you say it was yeah. a process of 
I think what? just learning, yeah, learning to surrender and learning to trust. Right. Um, and I will say, like, the relationship that, because as you guys know, mm-hmm. I was in a relationship for a mm-hmm. chunk of years. Um, and I think even through that relationship, learning, like, a new level of surrender mm-hmm. And really kind of coming to grips with, okay, I say that I trust God and I say that um, I believe that he knows what's best for me, Mm -hmm. but like, am I really going to, like, am I really going to live that out um, that he knows what is best? And if Mm -hmm. I really believe that, then I have to like, let go of my grip of whatever it is that I'm like, Mm -hmm. I want this so bad, like whatever it is, Mm -hmm. whether it is a relationship or getting married or... Mm -hmm. Whatever it is, right. you know, it can be anything. Um, so I think it's just like it was a gradual process of learning to like release my my grip and believing that God knows better than I do mm-hmm. what's what will be best for me. And then mm-hmm. I think too, like just being intentional to look at what you're thankful for. Right. Like you always can look at what you don't have, or you can be thankful for what you do have. And like I'm very aware that as a single person. And not having my own family and kids, I have more time and more capacity to, like, watch your kids, mm-hmm. you know, which is another thing. Like, I wouldn't be able to do that like I right. like I can if I had my own family I had mm-hmm. to take care of. So it's, like, just trying to look at it from a perspective of what do I have yeah. that's, like, unique to where God has me today? Right. And how can I use it in a way that's, like, a blessing to people around me? I was going to ask that question because it's— so many people frame questions around singleness out of like sympathy mm. right. or like, oh, God's going to bring the best person for you because they feel bad. Yeah. Like you're missing something yeah. when I think what you just said is, no, even in what other people maybe see as a lack, I've found gain Yeah, right. and valuing the gain, you mm-hmm. know, that you've found. I think mm-hmm. that's so mm-hmm. in any situation mm-hmm. that can yeah. be so huge yeah. mm-hmm. to just say, no, but even though I went through something difficult or... I was called to something different than other people. Right. I've found gain. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And other people might not ever see the value because they didn't have the same experience. 100%. Yeah. The yeah. Naomi line that I've used often from us talking about this mm-hmm. was you coming to the grips and realization of, do I really believe that God, what is it? Like God would not withhold something from me. Yeah. Um, or that he isn't just withholding things from me. Yeah, I think... Well, I think that kind of goes back to like believing that that God is good and him knowing better than I do what is best for me. Right. And so then I have to believe that what he gives me or what he doesn't give me, is that what you're talking about? Yeah. Yeah, that what he gives me or what or what he withholds yeah is for my good. Yeah. Um and just like surrendering to that is just Mm-hmm. really painful sometimes cuz mm-hmm. like if it's something that you think you really mm-hmm. would be good for you and you don't understand mm-hmm. like how how could that not be good for me right there's so much surrender in that and like for me a verse that my whole life is kind of a challenge is proverbs 3 5 and 6 about like trust mm-hmm. in the lord with all your heart right. and don't lean on your own understanding mm-hmm. cuz if i do lean on my own understanding then i'm like yeah why do I not get to be married? And why do I not get to have all this, you know, like that's me leaning on my own understanding. Right. And I'm going to be miserable if I like, if that's what I lean on. Um, and yeah, so like just trusting, mm-hmm. trusting the Lord and taking him at his word and just, and then when you can do that, there's like so much freedom and knowing like, he's going to take care of, like he's going to provide right. what's good for me. And I think in Christian culture— Can I culture, just say something about yes. that verse? Because I've thought about that verse a lot, and another translation says, lean not. Lean mm-hmm. not on your own understanding. And then it goes on to say, in all your ways acknowledge him. Mm-hmm. It doesn't say, lean not on your own understanding. Lean on his understanding. It doesn't say that. Mm-hmm. It just says acknowledge him, mm-hmm. which means you might not understand. Yeah. Or you might not even have his understanding. But just acknowledge, acknowledge him. him. That's yeah, powerful. Yeah, you know? totally. Yeah, which is a hard thing. Don't lean on yeah. what you understand. Just acknowledge, acknowledge him, him. Yeah, and he will make your path straight. Yeah. yeah. Yep. I think another common verse that can, whether it's used in appropriate context or not, is like, um, 
him giving the desires of your heart. Mm-hmm. And how does the first go exactly? Uh, it's always on the spot where it's like it oh my flies gosh. away. Yeah. Yes. He will give you the desires. Or, uh, it's another one about trusting, right? Like yeah. It's like, trusting and then he'll give you the desires of your heart. We're so prepared. Ah. Okay. But yeah, yes, I think it's like serving him and he'll give you the desires of your heart. But how, how often desires can equal in our minds happiness or like our wants and our needs, yeah. you know, and how have you processed through that verse in everything that you've walked through and experienced and processed? Mm-hmm. Well, yeah, like uh, for a long time, I think when I would hear that verse, you can kind of interpret it as like, oh, God will just give me what I want. And it's like, mm-hmm. no, no, that's actually not. That's not how it goes. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I can't remember where I heard like someone explain. I've heard you Explain it too, I think. Take delight in the Lord. Yes. And, and he, he will, will give, give you, you the, the desires, desires of, your of your heart. Psalm 37, 4. Okay. okay sorry. Good job. <laughs> um, but I heard someone describe it one time too as like how we kind of, it, like the, the way that it, what it actually means is more like not that he just gives you what you want, but that he like shapes your desires. Mm-hmm. Um, but then I'm, then I also think about like the, the, the thorn in the flesh, like that doesn't that doesn't mean that I just that still doesn't mean that I just get everything that I want or that I desire even, mm-hmm. you know, because I I don't know, like even in the concept of God, that God shapes your desires, that like that still doesn't really mean that you just get every single thing that you mm-hmm. desire, right? Right? I mean, and mm-hmm. then I think sometimes too. We were talking about the teddy bear meme where the little girl mm-hmm. has the little teddy bear mm-hmm. and Jesus is like asking her to surrender it. And She's then he has like, this. I love it. Right. And then he like behind his back has this huge teddy bear that he actually wants to give her. And I'm like, like in the sense of singleness and a relationship and marriage that using that picture, I think sometimes it's, you think it's going to be a big teddy bear that mm-hmm. he's going to give you. And then it, it, that's not what it is, but it's something that is actually better for you Mm -hmm. like he always gives us what's best but it's just not how we pictured it right I think is what I'm trying to say and it will always be if we steward it well what Mm -hmm. gives him glory and I do feel like you for sure have done that with your life thank you it's I'm trying (laughs) it doesn't always feel like it but (gasps) work in progress what has been the biggest challenge or fear that you've walked through as a single woman. Um, okay, well, I'm laughing because Janae and I have had this conversation before, and if she has a moment where she's frustrated with her children, I say, well, at least you have someone to take care of you when you're old. <laughs> oh, um, and there was like an actual legit season where I was worried about that. Yes. It was like after my um, grandma, I think, I, like I'd seen the last couple years of her life, like going into a nursing home and in and out of the hospital and Um, And I just saw, like, how my parents, my dad and my mom, like, advocated for her. And, you know, and that is actually what made me start, like, I would say, like, for a a little while feeling fearful Mm. about, like, who is going to do that for me? Right. Like, if I'm not, if I'm not married and I don't have, like, a a son or a daughter-in-law or, you know, or children who will, like, Mm -hmm. advocate for me, who's going to, like, make sure they're not mistreating me in the nursing home. Like that was like a legit fear, Mm -hmm. you know? Um, But then again, the Holy Spirit convicted me about like trust in the Lord with all your heart, Naomi. Mm -hmm. Like, do you not, do you not believe that I can take care of you then? Like I have taken care of you up to this point, Mm -hmm. you know? So again, just like having to surrender Mm -hmm. and trust and lean not (laughs) On my own understanding right. of it. But yeah, it, I'm like, and maybe there will be a season where I get scared about that again. I kind of hope not. I kind of hope I'm just like through that and done with it. <laughs> or maybe, I don't know, I'm sure there'll be some new fear that comes up that I have to surrender right, and trust the Lord right. with. But um, that's probably like the most tangible one mm-hmm. that I, that mm-hmm. comes to mind. Right. Mm-hmm. Unless I said something in an earlier conversation that you're no. wanting to remind me of. <laughs> no, that is it. I think, 
And I was wondering if any other things came to mind, challenges or. What do you think a single person thinks about with their future and maybe has fear that somebody who's married or just in a different Mm -hmm. life situation doesn't think about? Mm -hmm. Because even you saying that, Mm -hmm. I'm like, I've never thought about that a day in my life. Right. And I don't know if it's because I'm married or I've just not thought about that. You know, and are yeah. there other things where it's like this is something I live with and that I process that maybe somebody in a different situation doesn't yeah. think about? Um, I don't I don't know because, like, I don't know what people who aren't single right. think about. Mm. <laughs> so, like, I don't know what's different. Well, I, I remember through COVID just talking about when you're, like, to be in your home. Yeah. That it was like, no, it was just me. Yeah. In my condo. Yes. Okay. Like, and yeah. here's an example. Um, I feel like it just happened recently. It was with the blizzard. I yes. think so. We had this blizzard, and what was that? <laughs> I don't know. Was that my watch? I'm sorry, guys. <laughs> uh, we had this blizzard, and like people were snowed in for days. And I was like, I was so like at the end of like the first day, I was like, okay, I'm ready to like see like see people and do things. And some of my friends who were uh, snowed in with their five children and their spouse were like. Oh my gosh, like I am done with people. I just want like a <laughs> quiet room. Um so right. I mean I think that's and I and I that's probably just like a, along the fear thing, like maybe just loneliness, mm-hmm. you know, cuz you think about like mm-hmm. getting older and other well and, I mean even now a little bit like people my age a lot of times are like busy with their own families and right. so you're kind of like you know, if you're not kind of an intentional to appreciate and um, live your full send full Mm -hmm. life um, it's it could be easy to just like feel isolated and well I'm just over here by myself Mm because I'm a single person I don't have like I don't have built-in community Mm -hmm. of a a best friend that lives with me and children right like you don't Mm -hmm. have that so Mm -hmm. you have to like be a little bit more intentional to cultivate it and that's something I love about you in your friend group. I feel like you have a couple different friend groups, but mm-hmm. you have a sweet friend group. I do. I love them. Is mm-hmm. there is a specific group that's all older single individuals that hang out and I yeah, just love which, that. Yeah, which is like a new thing within like the last year. We're all like uh like all 40-ish and yeah, like single and just have have fun and do dinner sometimes mm-hmm. and just hang out and yeah, that that is a really like pretty. I would say that's probably pretty rare, um, and I feel like that was definitely something that like the Lord just mm-hmm. kind of brought about. Yeah, but then I think it's good to have diversity too. Like and have have friends who are married and have mm-hmm. friends who are parents and have friends who are you know like in another mm-hmm. friend group. Some it's like younger married couples and some of them are just starting to have kids and some of them mm-hmm. have been married for you know, over a decade and don't have kids. And like, yeah. I just think diversity right. in your, in your friends is important. I think too. you just said something important too, because you said a bunch of friends who are like in their forties and single, and it's like a rare thing. And mm-hmm. that just reminds me of delight yourself in the Lord mm-hmm. and he'll give you the desires of your heart. Like he'll bring about, right? Mm, you know, like he'll give you the right desires, but yeah, he'll yeah. bring about the things that you need. You know, even right, if it's totally. rare or it seems like, mm-hmm. man, God just brought that together. Right. You know? Yeah. Yes. Because mm-hmm. if someone had like asked me to go and like try and put it together, I would have been like, that's impossible. Where will I find those people? And right. then it's like literally like within a matter of months, like God just like brought, just like brought us together. I love that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's so fun. Yeah. Um, what do you feel like, and maybe it's specifically to you or you feel like it maybe is a general I think the enemy has the exact same tactics mm. that he just does over and over and over. Mm-hmm. Um, but what specific maybe lies has the enemy tried to convince you of Yeah, through singleness mm-hmm. or you've seen in others mm-hmm. um, or maybe even things people have spoken over you that you've had to battle mentally and mm-hmm. not allow to solidify in your heart or your mind? Yeah. yeah. Um, there was one I was telling you about earlier that I'm just forgetting right now. Oh, what's wrong with you? Right. Yeah. So like, I feel like, and I'm even guilty of it myself sometimes of being like, oh, that person like, 
you know, is, is in their 40s and they or they're not married. I wonder what's wrong with them. Mm-hmm. And then you're like, oh, wait a second. <laughs> and I had said how I, I do actually know someone that got on a date with a guy. And he's like, so you're this old and single. What's wrong with you? Yeah. And she's like, this isn't going to work. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Red flag. Sorry. Yeah. And I don't know why we just like, why we default to that in our thinking. Like, that's kind of weird. Well, I think it's what I said earlier of just like, it's the cultural, yeah. here's what you do. Like, there must be a reason. It can't go, be so, because it's yeah. God's plan. Right. It can't be because there they're be living God's best plan for their life. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, so that that would be one. Um, but then I think another one too, and this might be like more specific to me. I would, I, I think I'd be kind of curious to other people who are single feel this, but just like kind of battling feeling unwanted. Because then you're just like, is there something where like this, like no, you you can kind of feel like no one wants you. Mm. And then you're like, like that can, for me, I feel like that's been where like mm-hmm. the enemy has like whispered, you know, and, right. and I know there have been moments where I've like lived under that and like mm. agreed with that. Mm-hmm. Um, and that too, I think just takes, I don't know, just a lot of surrendering and living by faith and not by your feelings mm-hmm. um, and like leaning on God's truth, not your own feelings or emotions. Because mm-hmm. um, I think that can for sure happen sometimes or, you know, you f- your emotions, like you feel like no one wants you and then right. you can like, you can kind of air quotes, prove it. <laughs> <laughs> Naomi's been I've around. worked with Pastor Josh for eight years, so I do a lot of air quotes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, um, welcome to the air quotes podcast. <laughs> oh my gosh, I forgot what I was saying. I don't. I'm sorry. Um. Well, anyway, just like feeling, it can be right. easy to feel like not wanted, and then you can mm-hmm. agree with it, and you really have to not lean on that, mm-hmm. um, and lean on what God's word says about me, not what culture says about me mm-hmm. or what ultimately like a, a, a male says mm-hmm. about me or right. a relationship status. Like mm-hmm. I can't, if I'm ever putting my worth in any of those things or like leaning more on what the world or people say about me than what my creator says about me, then I'm going to be like mm-hmm. disappointed really fast. So it's just kind of like a constant, mm-hmm. it's like driving a car with no power steering. Like you're sometimes right. just like, working so hard to keep it like out of the ditch (laughs) that's a great analogy driving a car without power steering yeah yeah that's how i feel sometimes it's like with all your might you're just like just just stay on the road (laughs) right (laughs) Uh i think you you also (laughs) mentioned something (laughs) interesting where you know you can desire for something or maybe it's yeah you look towards marriage or something and where you've heard or maybe had friends where they are married, and after a certain number of years, they're like, man, I just kind of miss being single, or like, I wish I could get back to having my time. And would mm-hmm. you say it's, no matter what season you find yourself in, it's a battle of comparison and contentment? Like, has it been a yeah. battle to just find, I'm content, no matter what season God has me in, I'm going to be content? Yeah, I yeah, I think— um Almost like a, you can deceive yourself into thinking, if I just have this, then I'll be happier. Mm-hmm. And so I think whether you're single or that can totally happen in marriage too, mm-hmm. you know? And so I think it's just, again, yeah, like keeping, finding your worth and your contentment mm-hmm. in the in the right place. Right. Yeah. Do you know a really cliche line that I think is actually really true? <laughs> what, <Can't> Josh? <laughs> the grass is not greener on the other side of the fence. It's greener where you water it. Mm-hmm. I mean, as cliche. And I've heard someone say the grass is not greener on the other, other side. It's just a different shade of green. That's mm. true too. Yeah. But it's like, you can always look around your life. Right. You know, and wish right. for something different. Mm-hmm. Or Well, yeah. And I felt like I, I, like you hear it a lot in singleness, like mm-hmm. you're just waiting for that, that right person or you're just waiting to be married. Mm-hmm. But then I like started to realize, no, I'm noticing like in my, in my parents' friends too, where they're just like, I'm just waiting to for that grandchild to come, or I'm just mm-hmm. waiting for retirement, or I'm just waiting till the kids are out of the house. And I like had this moment of realizing, oh my gosh, if I like allow myself to live in this state of thinking, it's not gonna end. 
Yeah. When I get married, if I get married, like it's not mm-hmm. going to end then because right? I've like trained my mind to live in this mm-hmm. thinking of like when this happens, then what, you know. And so I'm just like, I don't want to, mm-hmm. like, I want to break that, like, th- that cycle of thinking. Mm-hmm. I don't want to mm-hmm. live in that now either. Because, mm-hmm. yeah, because then you realize, oh, man, that that can just keep, mm-hmm. keep on. It's mm-hmm. not actually just about singleness. It's just. Yeah. And no matter where you are, what your status is, married, mm-hmm. single, widowed, whatever, yeah. we all are called to die to self and called to say no to something. Yes. And I I just think that's a really powerful thing where yeah. that's not going to stop whether you get married. It's just a no to different things. Yeah. Totally. Yeah. I'm thinking too, like the Bible says godliness with contentment mm. is great gain. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Godliness with contentment is great gain. And it's so easy yeah. to wish for something in the future. Mm-hmm. And we totally get caught in that of like, okay, mm-hmm. when our kids are like in their teenage years, it's going to be easier. I mean, we just said it the other night. We're like, <laughs> oh, we're looking forward to the day where there's no more diapers uh-huh. and no more cocoa and melon. And then they're going to be teenagers. Yeah. <laughs> more, get months, it out of my house. I think I've been saying, I'm six months away from no more diapers and a year away from no more cocoa melon. <laughs> Let it be so. I mean, sorry. not that it's wrong to look forward to those things. But, but, no, but, you, but I, I, it's a hamster wheel. You can yes, just, totally. it's the next thing. Yeah. You yeah. are so right. It, and it just every doesn't... season has different challenges. Mm-hmm. Like mm-hmm. there's going to be harder conversations when they're older, you know, mm-hmm. and just godliness with contentment. Yeah. And that's an everyday, right. everyday battle. Yeah. I think what's cool about that too. Um, okay. And I don't know if I'm going to articulate this in the, the right way, but sometimes it's like you, I hear that. And I think gain in the sense of like, um, like, God will think I'm doing a better job at living for him or something. But I think sometimes it's like, no, it's a gain for like for me too. Right. Like yeah. I will be happier. Mm. Like I will actually be happier right. when I am content in him and where he has me. Yep. Mm-hmm. Like it's not just about you're checking a list because you're doing the right thing. It's mm-hmm. like, no, because when you're content and when you're not leaning on your, your own understanding— the like the peace and the freedom that you mm-hmm. feel is going to be like it's going to be what's best for you because right. it's going to be like the best way to live. So mm-hmm. it's not just about like I'm trying to please God. Right. It's also because when you're like doing it God's way, that's when you're like most fulfilled. Right. Which has been like that's kind of a, a sh- like what I'm trying to say too when I'm talking about like God's best. Like He's always working for our best, and He right. knows better than I do. Mm-hmm. What's best, right? Mm-hmm. And like having just yeah, surrender to that. That's so good. Well, I feel like we need to end this podcast with there, a nineties no, song. We're having, oh gosh, why? So okay, go ahead. I'm thinking. You know, we we're talking about how. <laughs> oh gosh, I'm so scared. <laughs> no, you're you're gonna be so overjoyed. We were talking about how we could wish for the past or wish for the future. And it reminds me of the Israelites being in the wilderness thinking, if we could just go back to Egypt. Right. Are you going to do Sarah Groves? I was going to make you do Sarah Groves. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I don't know what it's you guys tr- are talking there about. There was this great song that says, I've been painting pictures of Egypt, leaving out what it lacks. Yeah. Mm-hmm. The future looks so hard and I want to go back. But the places these to fit me. Cannot hold the things I've learned. Those roads were closed off to me. While my back was turned. Come on. <laughs> 90s Christian CCM. Over I here. was so scared you were going to pull out a DC talk like like, uh, like one of the songs about, oh, I can't remember any of them now, but. I feel so irrelevant right true. now. No? No. It's a different, it's a different one about Ooh. like getting married. Oh, a specific <laughs> one. <laughs> Thank you for not seeing that one. <laughs> <laughs> I was born in 1989. I'll just say that. So I'm we'll not pull as out cultured. Some classic DC Talk songs for you, Janae. Yeah, I also <laughs> didn't get saved till later in life. Different than you guys, but uh. you know, I can hang with you. One, one of my deep appreciations for Naomi is that <laughs> she has a strong nostalgia attached to the 90s. Yes. As do I. Hers goes a little further back in the 90s, but not yeah. that much. Like the 90s are like my glory years because uh-huh. that's yes. when I like. Like graduated from high school and went to college. All of my yeah. college years were in the nineties. Yeah. So if you have any questions about anything that happened in yes. the nineties, go ahead and drop them. You <laughs> if know. you would like a tutorial on how to tight roll your pants, <laughs> yes. your jeans, I can help you. We and did. your hair. We did a nineties yeah. themed event for our dream yeah. teamers, and Naomi was literally 
Just living in your It was the prime. best. <laughs> oh, but man. in all seriousness, um, what I told Naomi this, but I like one of the things that I just appreciate about Naomi is that she's one of the most loyal people. Yes. And mm-hmm. like when you're called to people, you mm-hmm. are loyal, you're in it with them. And we've just definitely mm-hmm. been on the receiving mm-hmm. end of that, you know, and are so grateful for that. And you're also uh, like just, <laughs> sorry, now I'm thinking about. Oh boy, can't wait. Um, you're also just really good at conversations with people mm-hmm. and like, and I think we felt protected by that, but mm. also you just bring clarity right. in conversations you're in. But yeah. 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 Well, I'll just add like part of why I'm thankful even for like that I'm, that I'm single right now mm-hmm. is that like, I know that that frees me up to support you guys mm-hmm. in, in different ways too, which mm-hmm. I'm honored to get to do and love doing. So again, we evidence of like God's best and goodness. What I said, we didn't. <laughs> no, pay her to no, that. it's true. So, eight years uh, with Josh and Janae, right? Is it eight? It's probably almost nine. It's almost like nine, nine in wow. 2023. Right. It would be nine years. Crazy. Yeah, it's, yeah. It's been a fun ride. But for real, it's an example of like God's best in my right. life is like friendship with you guys right. and like serving your family mm-hmm. and the church. I mean, all of that is. Mm-hmm. Like beautiful, beautiful blessings. Like right. yeah. God's goodness. Yeah. Well, we couldn't do it without you. Like actually. Nor would we want to. Oh, I may or may not have a contingency plan if God ever calls Naomi away where she could still be Josh's assistant from afar. <laughs> we just don't tell her about it because we don't want her to entertain <laughs> oh, that no. idea. I'm I have, not, we so. have thought, thought it through though. Yeah. So no, you're a blessing. This, I hope this was mm. beneficial. I think it benefits anyone in any season because I've learned so much. Mm-hmm. Even from this conversation, which has stemmed from so many previous mm-hmm. conversations. And yeah, I mean, I know I did ask you, but like, I've had to fight it of like meeting single guys. And I'm like, oh, Naomi, you know, <laughs> and just had to talk through like, hey, are you okay with this? Are you open to that? And I just love yeah. like your take on that. Like, mm-hmm. yeah. if this is what God has for me, I'm content, but I'm not shutting down the yeah. idea. Yeah. Um, and yeah. I just hope it's encouraged. A lot of people, I think Mm -hmm. it will. Yeah. God knows what he's doing. Just please don't pay anyone to take Naomi out. That moral of the story. Please. (laughs) We did that once. Okay, I'll stop. Okay, yep. Thank you. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. (laughs) Thanks for tuning in. Um, (laughs) We're all so familiar with each other. We are too familiar, probably. (laughs) Okay. Subscribe and all the things to where you can see the podcast when new episodes come out. Share it. If you have a friend or family that you feel like would be encouraged by this, Mm -hmm. share it with them and hopefully it draws them closer to the Lord Mm because I think it will. Yeah, it's one of the reasons we love this podcast is to just bring airtime to topics that don't always get airtime. And so there might be somebody who this would help. Yeah, full send for Jesus. Mm -hmm. Full send. And singleness. Mm -hmm. We love you all. We'll see you next time. Bye.